Pinterest problems. For today's Pinterest problem project, I'm going to show you how to dye a t-shirt. I'm going to be trying a dyeing technique called shibori. Shibori is a dyeing method where you take your fabric and you fold it, bind it, stitch it, twist it, and then do things to it like put rubber bands on it, use wooden blocks, all to produce a certain type of pattern. I've noticed lately that shibori is everywhere. I've seen pillows, bedding, shirts, scarves, and I couldn't help but jump on the bandwagon. I've got a shirt here, another shirt, and it doesn't stop there. I even have a rug. So I really like this dyeing technique, and although I've been buying things, I thought, why not try to make your own? Of course, following something on Pinterest. So that is what we're going to be doing today. This is a picture of what I'm trying to achieve by following the directions for this specific pattern. The supplies that you'll need are fabric dye. I found a couple different t-shirts at Old Navy. This one, it's just like a slouchy t-shirt with a pocket. And you can find white t-shirts pretty much anywhere. Rubber gloves, a bucket, rubber bands, and the things that your dye calls for like salt, a measuring cup, and something to stir your dye with, like a spoon. For this technique, I'm going to show you the steps that you need to do to get the desired pattern. So you need to take your fabric and fold it accordion style the long way. The next step is to fold it accordion style again, but the other way. <laughs> the last step is to rubber band our fabric. And in what I pinned, they said that the tighter you make your rubber bands, the more white spots you'll have. Here is my shirt all folded and bound together with my rubber bands. So now it's time to dye it. Not that kind of dye it. Dye it. Never mind. When dyeing your fabric, follow the directions that are on the dye that you bought. I bought the RIT dye, and so they suggest, first of course, to protect your workspace. So I've got my classy plastic bag here that I'm putting down on my table. And they do have some directions that are on the dye bottle, but they're not thorough, and it actually says for complete instructions, visit their website. With the RIT dye, they suggest using the entire bottle for every two pounds of fabric you use, but if I'm just dyeing one shirt, I weighed it and it came out to be about a fourth of a pound. So with that theory in mind, I should use... I should use an eighth a bottle of dye. They do suggest as well though, for dark or bright colors, double dye quantity. So I think I may use about a fourth a bottle of this. The next step is to fill your bucket, whatever you're using to dye your fabric in, with your water. You wanna make sure that this water is really hot. I just have my water boiling so it's ready to go. And you wanna make sure that you use enough water so that once you put your fabric in your bucket or container, your fabric can move around freely. So I think I'm just gonna fill this up. This is about two gallons. The next step is to add your dye to the water. Doesn't look too exciting in my black bucket because my water just looks black, so it's not too exciting yet. The next step is to add salt to the water. They say to add one cup of salt to two cups of water and then add that to your dye mixture. So we have our salt, dye, and water mixture ready to go. The next step is to soak whatever fabric you're dyeing in water, so I've done that already to this, and just put it in. You wanna keep it in here for about 
about 10 to 30 minutes or until your desired color is achieved. So I let mine soak for about 20 minutes in the dye and it looks pretty good, but we won't know until we take the rubber bands off and rinse it off. You wanna rinse it until your water runs clear through the shirt. Now, I need to let it dry, but I think this turned out really awesome. I love this. I think that it looks pretty close to the pattern in what I pinned. Hers turned out a little darker, but it is all about how you fold it and bind it. So I think that this turned out pretty good. The one last step is to hang it up to dry, and then I will try it on and show you what it looks like. My impeccable modeling skills showing off how my shirt turned out. I really like the way it looks. I love how unique it is and how some of the pattern is on one part but not others, like both sleeves are really different. And I think that it's just overall a really cute shirt. It looks like I bought it for way more than it actually cost to make. On my Pinterest scale of one being a Pinterest problem and 10 being Pinterest perfect, I think you can guess what I'm giving this project. A 10. I did not have any issues along the way. The directions were really clear and my shirt turned out pretty similar to the one in what I pinned. One thing that I thought was really helpful was going on Ritz website to follow the directions when dyeing. One thing I did notice with my shirt was that when it was wet, the navy dye of course looked a lot darker but then when I dried it, it turned out substantially lighter. Maybe next time I make another shirt, I'll let it sit in the dye bath for longer. I left mine in there for about 20 to 30 minutes, and I think next time I'll try like 45 minutes or even an hour. The cost of this Pinterest production was around $15. The thing that I think can make your project vary the most is whatever you're buying to dye. My shirt was about $6, but of course there's plenty of other white shirts out there that cost more or less, or whatever you happen to decide to dye. And of course, like a lot of other projects, many of my materials can be reused either to make another shirt or for a completely different project. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. If you have seen something on Pinterest that you want me to try, leave a comment for me down below and maybe it will be what I make in my next video. And most importantly, keep on pinning my Pinterest people.